Welcome, everybody. Welcome, everybody. George DeBobby here in Maryville, Tennessee, site of the homecoming football game between the Methodist Monarchs out of Fayetteville, North Carolina, and the Maribel Fighting Scots right here out of Maribel, Tennessee. It's uh, gray and overcast, a little bit of rain. And these two uh, USA South teams have played uh, a dozen times over the years. Maribel pretty much on top uh, with uh, 10 wins, and I believe there was only one loss uh, to the Monarchs. So this should be a big game for the Monarchs. The Monarchs 2-2. Two and two. Maribel yet to win a game, and Maribel looking to uh, come up with its first not only its first conference win, but its first win of the season. Maribel's had it a little bit tough uh, over this season so far. They played two top-ranked teams to open the season. And uh, they lost to Barry, ranked in the top 20. Barry losing to Barry 31-10 to on September 7th. Uh, the second game came the following week against a top 20 team ranked, and that was Center College losing to Center. 27-22, and then uh, Methodist that same week on September 14th uh, lost to Guilford 19-14. The following week on the 21st, Maribel went to 0-3, losing to Hanover 31-10. And uh, Methodist the same week went ahead and uh, won over Catholic. 30 to 14, and putting them at one and one. The following week on the 28th of September, both teams were open. And then uh, two weeks ago, Maryville lost its fourth game uh, up in Brevard, North Carolina, losing to Brevard 22-10. Methodist also lost the same week, going to one and two, losing to Huntington 48-7. Uh, switched out around the following week on October 12th. Maribel goes to Huntington and loses 45-35, going to 0-5. And Brevard loses to Methodist 24-23. So uh, these teams have played two common opponents, and both teams have lost to, uh, excuse me, Methodist beat Brevard in overtime 24-23. So it'll be interesting to see what happens in this game today. And before we get started... We'd like to thank our partners, our key sponsors for the 2019 and 20 season. It's the Blunt Partnership, Ken Joe Markets, Go Tees, Premier Transportation, LeConte Wealth Management, Airport Hilton, and Firehouse Subs. Please support these local businesses and make them welcome here in Blunt County and make them feel Blunt County is a community that they can thrive in. It's a special place for all Maribel College, its staff, administration, and students. This is also the bicentennial year at Maribel, 200 years uh, of this institution. And if you're looking at the field right now, there's a 200-year uh, logo on the 25-yard line on each side of the field. If you orient yourself uh, looking across the field, uh, the honor guard across the way, and we're going to have the national anthem sung here pretty quickly by Mindy Reagan. She's a Maribel grad, graduated in May of 2019. She is a music ed teacher working out of uh, Mary Blunt and Lanier schools. So she'll be doing that shortly with the honor guard across the way. If you face that way, that basically is facing north and west. If you look at the corners of the field, right corner, far corner would be the right corner would be uh, far right corner. I'm being signaled down in the field here. The far corner, high corner uh, is north. The left far corner across the field is west. You've got the south corner on the left side and the east corner on the right side and amassing down before you is the 1979 make that 78 football team they'll be honored here today and they'll be f tossing the coin as well so uh, there's a couple guys down there 
Uh, Barry Mathis is, uh, was the quarterback of that team. He's standing on the 44-yard line with the maroon hat on and the gray jacket. He was the captain. He's also a uh, 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 of official uh, for football and basketball and does some uh, Southern Conference, uh, Sun Conference, pretty big games. Very good official. The team was coached by uh, Coach Thickert. But before we do that, we are going to go ahead and do the national anthem. And again, that is going to be sung by Mindy Reagan. So we'll wait. Uh, and I, the people down on the field in front of the honor guard are uh, the inductees into the Hall of Fame and family. So we're going to do that as well before the football game breaks out. It's about 55 degrees right now. Not much of a wind. Bermuda turf, and it's in pretty good shape. So uh, we'll try to get you to let you hear some of this if we can. As I don't have the script, let's see here. I'm just being handed the script. Let's see what we got here. And we're talking about Mindy Reagan right now, getting ready to sing the national anthem, who's right here in front of me. She's, uh, like I said, the class of 2019. She continues to serve the co college as a member of the Blunt County Alumni Association, and she's about ready to go. So here we go. Very nice, Mindy. Very nice. And that was a great rendition of the national anthem, as it always is. So we're proud of uh, Mindy Reagan, class of 2019. And on the field right now, um, it's going to be the toss of the coin shortly. Coach Randy Lambert's out there, uh, longtime retired basketball coach. One of the winningest NCAA Division III coaches in history. And uh, he had a few of these guys out on the field that played for him. And uh, he's always, although not officially with the school in athletics, uh, he does work for the development office and certainly continues to be an impart a winning atmosphere onto this campus. A little wind picking up right now. The coin toss uh, for homecoming today will be teammates of the 79 football team, and they're celebrating their 40th anniversary today by being here. 
and there's uh, they're in mass and coach Fickert's here he was the coach I don't see him out there um, but that uh, had a pretty good team back then seven and two record and they beat Carson Newman that year 15 to seven which was a uh, uh, Carson Newman was uh, in a higher classification at the time and still are Carson Newman uh, is division two and Maryville Division Three. Maryville gives no scholarships at today either. And uh, Division Two is a scholarship school. One of the guys not out there who's coaching out at Maryville uh, or out at uh, Carson Newman is uh, head coach, uh, former head coach here and now an assistant coach out at Carson Newman, Coach Tony Iruli. And Coach Iruli was uh, a leading player on this 79 team. He was... Um, a linebacker extraordinaire as they say but uh, we'll get ready to go here in a second again we want to thank blunt partnership ken joe markets go tees premier transportation leconte wealth management airport hilton and firehouse subs please support these local businesses and thank them for making blunt county and the maryville community such a special place for all maryville college its staff administration and of course its students and we'll be right back Welcome back, and while we're waiting, everybody, uh, go over some quick uh, stats for you and some lineups that we'll have today. Look for uh, Maryville College uh, to start at quarterback today, uh, Caden Harbin. He's 6'2", 210, and Harbin is from Knoxville, Tennessee, went to Halls High School about 30 miles from here, 6'2", 210. To 10, so he'll start at quarterback today. Uh, his backup is number 12, Trevor Thomas. Thomas uh, is six feet, 160 pounds. At uh, center will be Jace Jace Britton. He's a freshman, 6'4", 270. And his backup will be uh, Connor Plakis, uh, right guard. Reginald, make that Ronald. Villa Lobos, excuse me, I've got that wrong. Villa Lobos, he's a freshman, 6'2", 175. And Villa Lobos is, um, let me get where he's from. And he is from Sevierville, Tennessee. I thought I knew that name. Sevierville, Tennessee. And uh, Jace Britt in the center. Uh, he'll be wearing number 75 today. He's a freshman some from Cherryville, North Carolina. At left guard, I talked about Jaden Harris, 5'10", 255. Harris is from Greenback, Tennessee, just south of here, about 20 miles. Some fine football program, uh, a 1A high school program. Uh, has had a, some great success here recently. Also, uh, starting at on the offensive line is uh, Davian Montgomery, 6'2", 255. Montgomery is from Spring, Texas, a senior. At left tackle is Kyle Larson, 5'11", 
260. And Kyle Larson, the senior from St. Simons Island in Georgia. Tight end will be number six, Terry Stewart. And Terry Stewart, a tight end from Pleasant Grove, Alabama. At wide receivers, it'll be number 18. And that's Shamar Collier. He's from Leland, Mississippi. Also, Andrew Gentry, sophomore 6'1", 190. And Gentry is from Gatlinburg, Tennessee, just over the mountain from here. Also, uh, you'll have Jacob Cortez. Cortez uh, will wear 81. He's 5'11", 180. And he's from Lenore City, Tennessee. And you're running back number four, Jacob Bunch. And Bunch uh, is just north from north of Knoxville in Bean Station, 6'1", to 10. And uh, you'll also see at running back Trevin Thrower. He's a freshman, 5'9", 185. And uh, you'll see him in their spotting bunch. Uh, quarterback situation is getting better all the time. When you have a freshman quarterback, he has to learn. You've got some good coaches here. The coaches certainly are working with them. And uh, the captain's out there for Marable right now, getting ready to go. Just about five minutes as the bag pipers, or piper comes out onto the field, which is tradition here. And the team will follow right behind that. I want to welcome old Don Story sitting here with me, Coach Story. Good to have you, as usual. You can put a headset on if you want, sir. Good to see Coach Story all the time. Captain's number six for Marable is Terry Stewart. He plays tight end, 6'2", 232. Number 50 for Marable will be Bo Henning, or excuse me, Herring, from Navarre, Florida, 6'1", 217. And number 72 is Kyle Larson. We talked about him, 5'11", 260. On the other side of the aisle, it'll be number three, Steve Keone, he's the, a quarterback from Miami, uh, Florida. Number five. Number four, Nick Baker. You'll see him at running back. Number five, Vic Woods. You'll see him at wide receiver. And out come the Fighting Scots. Scots uh, white pants, white helmets today with the garnet jerseys, and they're ready to go today. Also, captain number 16 is Nate Jones. And uh, as you might be hearing, participating in the homecoming toys is teammates from the 79 football team. They're celebrating their 40th anniversary. The 79 team finished the season seven and two. As a senior class, this team had a remarkable 28 wins and seven losses in their four year tenure. Participating in the toss today, head coach Steve Fickert. Steve Fickert's got the dark hat on the right side uh, in the middle, right behind the official with the R on it, tossing the coin. Barry Mathis is also out there. Talked about him. He's an official. And to the right of Coach Fickert. Uh, to the right of Coach Fickert will be, let me take a look and see who that is. Uh, John Shannon. So Methodist has won the toss. Maribel would defend the left side of the field, which would be the southwest or west side. And no noticeable wind. And again, the field is uh, Bermuda grass. It's a little slippery, not much, but it's uh, slippery enough to be concerned about it. And as the 79 team comes off the field, we want to welcome them all back, and we'll honor the whole 79 football team at the end of or at halftime today. So we get ready to go. The officials are conferring in their last little bit of information with each other, and Marvel will be kicking off.
from left to right. Well, take that back from right to left. They uh, had it backwards out on the field. So here we go. We get ready to go. Marable kicking off will be 45, and that's going to be Trey Hampton. And we get ready to go here. Methodist, uh, the Monarchs in the white and green. And Marable, the Scots in the maroon and white. And we're ready to go. Hampton, a freshman. Getting ready to kick off. And we are underway. And this one's going to be picked up at about the 10-yard line. And coming from right to left. And getting to the 30, 35, and drug down. The ball is fumbled, but uh, they say he was down. Prelo uh, returned the kick, and he was down. So first and 10 at the 34. Methodist will come out. Starting quarterback, as we said, uh, Brandon Bullens, a 6'2", 170-pound freshman. And Bullens uh, throws the ball quite a bit. Right before this game, 64 of 118, five touchdowns. From the shotgun, he's going to hand off right away. And right up the middle is Vontre Howard, six feet tall, 190. Howard... Uh, has three touchdowns so far this season. Howard uh, has carried uh, 73 times for 351 yards. Second down and let's call it four. Man in motion is Prelo. They go back to pass. Not much of a rush and he's sacked from behind. Crummy with the sack for Marable. Trenton Cumbie with the tackle, the senior. That takes him back to the 35, and it'll be third down, third and nine. Passing situation. Bullens will look for six, eight, or five, or maybe number 80. More. Back to pass. Good pressure again. Stepping back, we're going to have a hold. The pass is complete. And getting first down yardage into Maribel territory at the 45 is Vic Woods. And we've got the flag way back at the 31-yard line. The official will signal us be holding against Methodist. That's going to set him a 10-yard spot foul. Nettle throws. Not a spot foul, it's from the line of scrimmage. He'll take him back to the 25 yard line. The culprit on the hold is not on the roster. Let's check the unofficial roster and it's still not there. So we'll get to it later. Third down and 20. Bullen's back to pass. To throw the ball over the middle, and it's going to be a first down. Made it look easy to Jamar Moore. That doesn't. Uh... At the 47, I mean, that was too easy. Moore is from Rock Hill, South Carolina. 
And here comes the little swing pass. Going to throw it outside. We've got a flag. And the Moore again gets first down, good first down yards, down to the 32. We've got a flag back, and Method is going to be flagged. See what the infraction is. Yeah, ineligible receiver downfield. First and 15. Brandon Bullen's the quarterback. Going to go back to pass. Going to throw the ball to the outside. Nobody is covering the receiver. Prelo. First and 10. I don't know that anybody was covering anybody there. Two set backfield now for Methodist. Nothing, nothing, your score. Goes inside to Howard. Howard's going to get backed up right there to meet him. Good low on the tackle for Marable. Second and nine. Opening drive. 12.04 left to go for this first quarter. And a little backside handoff. And uh, getting good yardage there is Vontae Howard on the little off tackle. He's going to get about eight. So the ball at the 31. The only thing that has stopped Methodist at this point has been, uh, oh, they're going to go from a wildcat with Howard uh, back as a running back. Quarterback not in there right now. They've got number 25 in there, Tracy Fusilier, and he's going to go ahead and back it. Coming in to make a tackle, and they may have gotten the first down. It's going to be close. And now we have a flag thrown from way back and a late flag thrown by the back judge. And I don't know what the call was, but it came late and it came from way, way back. Hear what the officials have to say. Number 10 called for the foul. Jamal Ware, a senior, and uh, did not see what that was, but it's definitely a 15 yard penalty. So now, with one, excuse me, 11 10 left, the ball is down to the 15 yard line in Methodist's opening drive. Bullens at the quarterback, Howard in the slot to his right. And he'll give the ball to Howard. Jitter step through the line of scrimmage. He's gonna get uh, about six yards down to the nine yard line. Ten forty left to go. Homecoming here today. Ball at the 10, they have to get to the five for the first down. Under center this time. Bullens going to hand the ball off to Howard, and Howard's going to get thrown for a loss of about one or two. Ware and on the tackle there, number 10. So that's uh, about a three yard loss. 
tailback is Baker. Go back to pass, here comes the blitz, right over the middle, incomplete. It'll be fourth down. So Maribel dodges a bullet there. Finally put the brakes on. This field goal will be from 30. Trevor Hargett, a freshman place kicker from Gastonia, North Carolina, as the rain starts to come down. And this one sails through the uprights, and it's 3-0 Methodist. We'll take a quick break. We'll be right back as I adjust for the rain. Welcome back, everybody. Getting ready for the kickoff. Hargett going to kip deep. Pierre Watkins for Maryville. And Connor Chandler. And that's going to go to Chandler at the five. He'll pick up the ball after dropping it. And then he's going to be stopped, but a flag goes down. Lay the flag at the 15. Not sure what it is. Probably a hold, a block in the back. So that'll set Marable half the distance of the goal. So a block in the back. And the rain starts to come down. From the seven yard line, Harbin will be the quarterback. And he'll hand off. No, he's gonna go back to pass. And he'll get to about the five. Trevor Thomas is going in now as uh, the helmet of Harbin came off. So a loss of uh, three yards back inside the five yard line. And we've got illegal procedure against Marable. Going backwards. And Bunch with the ball, going to get to the five, and he'll get all the way out to the seven-yard line. Not a three-yard gain. It'll be third down and long. And back in goes Harden. Nine oh eight left to go. Maryville down three nothing. A long drive by uh, Methodist, actually sixty-five yards. Uh, was actually would have been shirt than that due to the field goal. And now we've got the ball being moved 
a penalty. Did not see that one. Let's. That's the that's the fifth penalty so far in this game, and the game is not even. It's uh, six minutes long. So now Maribel gets first and ten. Some kind of didn't quite hear what the official had to say. Harbin will keep the ball himself. And Harbin breaks a tackle and goes through and gets out to the 30-yard line. Harbin gets himself seven or eight yards. Harbin looks to the sideline as the rain stops. And right up into the mesh goes Bunch, and Bunch is uh, not going to get anywhere. Tackle made by uh, Roderick Christian. So it'll be second down and eight, no gain. Make it third and one, long one. Sidelines signaling in the plays for Marable. Three nothing, your score, 740 left to go in this first quarter. Marable down. And right in there it gets Bunch. And he's gonna get the first down and he'll get more as he gets across the 40 yard line. And now we're gonna get a flag at the end of the play. Flag will be on number 11, Cahill Patterson, the linebacker. Let's see what. And uh, that's penalty number seven. So that uh, takes the ball into Methodist territory with 729 left to go, first and 10. Marvel at the 44 yard line. The first pass of the game, and it's going to be well diagnosed by Devontae White. That's a loss of about two yards. Just one minute. We got Coach Don Story here. And Coach Story will give us a, a few words in a minute. And it's Bunch right up the middle. And he'll get some good running room down to the 37. What do you think about that, Coach? Well, that was a very good run. You've been through many homecomings. Talk a little bit about that. Well, it's been great to see everybody and hoping for victory here. All right, Coach, we got third and let's call it a long four. Maribel puts a man in motion. And we've got another penalty. Number eight. <laughs> <laughs> it's homecoming. Everybody's excited. So that gives us uh, at 6.09 left to go. Maribel will go back five. So, so we have a penalty for every minute we've played, right? That's correct. It's one of those games that uh, I think these teams are taking too long to feel, fill each other out. Could be. Throw the ball downfield once and loosen them up a little bit. Here we go. And oh. there's a fumble, and it's recovered by Merrill, but we also have another flag. <laughs> and it's going to go against Methodist. Might have been offsides. Offside. 
And so 5.41 left to go first quarter. Methodist leads 3-0, and that's penalty number nine. As a former coach, uh, Don, penalties were a no-no. That's right. And drive killers. Drive killer, that's what I was thinking. But maybe they're a drive sustainer here. So third and let's call it five, back where they were. Ball going to be handed off right up All the middle, right. and Bunch is going to get himself a bunch across the 30 down to the 27. When you get runs like that, Coach, what does that do to your, the defensive team? How, do, how, how are they feeling after giving up lots of yardage like that? Uh, I guess they're feeling desperate right now, but that was straight up the middle. And Maryville going to throw the ball downfield, mm -hmm. and it's out of bounds. Yeah, you know, you, you, you give up a lot of yardage, and you begin to wonder, uh, as a coach, do I have the right personnel in there? Do I need to change? It, it might be all you have. <laughs> <laughs> You've been through that. <laughs> right. <laughs> Ball at the 28, and it's second and 10 with 5.06 left to play first quarter here at Maryville College. It's homecoming. 200 years of college football, or 200 years of college football here. Back to pass, a little screen to the opposite side. Good blocking, and Bunch is going to get the first down, and Bunch is going to get down to the 10-yard line, make it 11-yard line, first and 10. Well-executed play. Yes, it was. Coach, why would you call a screen play? Why? Because of the way they line up or what they've been doing. If they've been blitzing a lot of people, a screen's a good call if you can get it off. And they've been bunching it up in the center a little bit. When you were coaching, you had, uh, you, did you basically run a T offense or a wing T? What did you run back then? Well, and I mean in the 80s when you coached 90s. Well, we had, we ran a wing T and we also ran a wishbone in the 70s. And Thrower with a couple of yard gains and a big hit. Yeah, the wishbone, uh, was an interesting offense. Yes. It was the thing to do in the early 70s. I think Oklahoma and Texas and those schools ran it to uh, excess and well. Yes. So second down and eight. Harden for Maribel at quarterback. And we're going to get another penalty right. and All a right. touchdown, but that's going to come back. Big hole up the middle. That Offside, oh, yeah, so them. that's a touchdown for Marable. Great. And it's the same guy, number two, I believe it was, this uh, defensive end on this side. So Marable with a nice drive, 95 yards. Yes. Kicking an important part of the game. Absolutely. 6-3 Marable now with 3.49 left to go. Extra point attempt. And illegal procedure, number penalty number 11. This is the crew from Heck. <laughs> <laughs> So the extra point will go back to the 15 yard line. Maryville trying to make it seven to three. And that sails through the uprights and it is good. And with 349 left to go in this first period, Maryville up over Methodist in this USA South Conference game, seven to three. We'll take a quick break. This thing up. We'll be right back.
Glad to have Coach Don Story up here for a few minutes. Thank you, Coach. It's always a pleasure to have you up here, always. 7-3, your score. Marable leads Methodist. And Methodist came out on fire, we thought, and then Marable took the ball down the field in uh, another short kick down to the 10. And it's Prelo. And Prelo's going to get about to where he got last time, out to the 35. Special teams. Uh, the length of the kick has a lot to do with that as well. That kick uh, short, 25-yard return. First and 10 for Methodist with 340 left to go here at Maryville. This is homecoming, and uh, it is a packed house, not only here in the stands uh, at on the Maryville side, but probably more tailgaters than I've seen ever. Brandon Bullens, the quarterback, going to hand off to Baker. Baker is going to get to the line of scrimmage, and that's all he gets. Tackle going to be made by Maryville's Bo Herring. Nick Baker carries the ball. Coach, did you have many tailgaters when you were? <laughs> we had a lot more bleachers. Yeah. <laughs> Yard loss. Three wide receivers right to make it the other way around. Three left, two right. Little quick pass, and Maryville will meet. The receiver there, Jamar Moore, after a short gain. Bullens pass complete to Jamar Moore. Tackle made by Michael Bailey. Tackle made by Cody Manis, the linebacker from Pigeon Forge, after about a six-yard gain. Third and five. Two setbacks, one on either side of the quarterback, Bullens. He's going to go back to pass. Maribel with some pressure over the middle, and incomplete. There was a collision downfield between uh, Maribel's Michael Bailey. No call, so it's fourth. I don't have the advantage of replay here, so not sure what happened, but the feet got tangled, so Maryville forces a punt. 2.26 left to go for Methodist here in the first period. Down to Maryville, 7-3, to and back deep for Maryville. Cannot see who that is, but we'll see Haggerty getting ready to punt. Maryville with some good pressure, good punt. And it bounces Maribel's way to the 25, 26, 27. The receiver was uh, Clayton Ogle back there. And so Maribel gets possession, leading 7-3. to three. Back in there, quarterback for Maribel. Caden Harbin. Two wideouts left, one right. Send a man in motion. And it's going to be a designed run in getting to the 30 yard line, a three yard gain. Harden gets out of bounds. And lots of John going on out there. Devontae White. The tailback for Maribel. Looks like it's Jordan Hogan. Can't be, but we'll see. Hard to see the numbers from here. And right up the middle and getting very little across the 30 yard line. And that tailback is Cody Eastep, a freshman from Grace Christian. So it's going to be third down and seven. That's a 
Maryville on third down uh, up to this point. 22, 23 of 77, 30%, not real good. Here comes the blitz, and they're going to throw the screen and incompleted pass. So that uh, play didn't work. Looked like it was going to be a screen pass, and they had a full blitz on. So 107 left to go first quarter, 7-3 Maryville. And Maryville punt. It'll be Hubs getting ready to punt. Hubs 6-1, uh, 175 from Palm Coast, Florida. Let's see if we get a good punt off with 107 left. Good snap. And we've got another flag. It's going to be a short punt, and it'll be caught at the 37-yard line. Let's see what the flag is. We did not get, looked like, not sure what it was. Ball's going to come back, though. So it's off offsides, penalty number 12. So that'll be fourth down in two. And I assume Maribel will kick again, deep in their own territory. Prelo back deep again. Waiting, good snap. And it's going to be a nice punt. And caught at the 27-yard line. So they got their five yards back there. Good, good decision. And that's the worst field position that uh, Methodist has had to date with 52 seconds left to go. Maryville leading 7-3 here at Maryville. It's homecoming. And it is packed, and uh, the smell of barbecue is everywhere. <laughs> and, and I think there's a hint of beer in the air, too. <laughs> so here we go. With 52 seconds left, first and 10, Methodist will hand the ball off, and right up the middle getting some good running room is Vontre Howard. Howard had some pretty good uh, stats coming into this game. Second down, and let's call it four. And they'll hand off again, same play, and different result. He'll take a loss, and a nice tackle there by Jamal Ware. So it'll be third in about, uh, right now it's, they'll move it back a yard, two, and that's the end of the first quarter. So when we come back, it'll be third and seven. Maribel leading 7-3 here at Maribel. We'll be right back. Welcome back, everybody. George DeBobby here. Getting ready for the second quarter action with Maribel leading 
Methodist 7-3. Methodist scored first on a 40-yard drive and a 25-yard field goal. Maribel went on a 95-yard drive after that to, to make it 7-3. 15 on the play clock. Bullens looking. Going to hand off and not getting anywhere is Nick Baker, 5'11", senior from Conover, North Carolina. And there's no penalty flag. <laughs> and that'll make it fourth down. And that was a pretty, pretty conservative play on third down when they'd thrown the ball quite well. Haggerty will punt. Ogle will get ready to... Uh, Punt the ball, I mean receive the ball for Maribel. Fourth down and six. So Maribel gets ready and uh, that, that punter got pressured quite a bit and that ball is going to be out of bounds somewhere around the 35. We'll be at the 32 yard line. Good pressure on the kicker that time. It'll be first and 10 for Maribel here in the second quarter. They lead 7-3. Quarterback will be Trevor Thomas. Terry is number 21. He'll be back there with them. Three wideouts right side. Tight end left side. Man in motion is Chandler, back to pass, and flushed out of the pocket. And we're gonna have a late flag and an interception. See what the flag is. Holding against Marable, so that'll be declined and the interception will stand. Trevor Thomas uh, throwing another interception. And that uh, gives Methodist some very good field position out at the 42-yard line of Marable. So here in the second quarter with one minute, one second gone, 13.59 left to go. It's 7-3. So uh, the... Methodist Monarchs get the ball right back and look for them to go to the end zone right now. Bullens. Go back to the pass. Throw the ball over the middle and it's a fumble picked up by Maryville and it's called an incompleted pass. That's what they said, incomplete. Just a long post pattern that he's running. Back judge ruled it incomplete. So at the 37, second and 10. Bullens back to pass again. Going to throw this little screen out here, and it's going to get no yardage. So it's a no gainer, actually a loss of these. Well, no gainer. Third and 10, little altercation right here in front of the Maryville bench of no consequence. Said he got about a yard on that play. 7-3 Maryville here, 13-15 left to go. Second quarter, Bullens will go back to pass looking Going to throw the ball, and it is going to be complete, and it's going to be a first down. Unless they get more pressure on Bullens, he can keep throwing like that. Nice young man, passer. He'd thrown five touchdowns before then, uh, 784 yards. And that's uh, kind of a 
Miss handoff and getting about four to five yards is Von Trey Howard, the senior running back. Collins making the tackle for Marable. And Collins coming off. Something with his helmet. Second and down, down and four. Monarch after the Monarchs after an interception are driving now. Now hand the ball back on the cutback to Howard, and Howard gets to the 16 yard line. It'll be third and let's call it two. 11.50 left to go here in this second period here at Marable College, homecoming. 11.45, seven to three Marable with the Monarchs threatening. Wide right, leading receiver is Vic Woods. There's gonna be a handoff right into the gut and looks like they May have gotten the first down. It's going to be close. This may take a measurement. Looks like they've got it, but uh, I'm all the way across the field. Yeah, they're going to take a timeout for a measurement. So the score, 11 4 left to go. The score, Maribel up 7 Three, a big first down measurement. I would think they would go for it here even if they didn't make it. So we'll wait for the change to come out. And let's see what we've got here. Gonna stretch those chains and they're gonna, uh, it's uh, a couple of inches short so it'll be fourth down. And I would think they're going to go for it here with a couple inches to go. Look for them to run a quick play here. I would say it would go to Von Trey Howard. Maryville, I would stack that middle. And here we go. And the handoff is to Vontre Howard, and he gets it by a mile. Vontre Howard carries the ball. Jamal Weir makes the tackle. Ball is at the 12. First and 10 for Methodist. So ball will be replaced at the 12. Be first and 10. 7 3, Maryville. Leading, but the ball is deep in Maryville territory. The Monarchs with 10.39 left to go, trying to put one in there. And they'll go back to pass, going to throw that little look in pass, and it is knocked away. In Grand, it was uh, Simeon Watson with the knock away. Simeon Watson is 5'7". And Moore is 6'1". So that's uh, quite a difference in height there. But pass is knocked away. Second down and 10. From the shotgun. Bullens with the handoff to Howard and he's gonna get to the 10. So he'll get about a yard. It'll be third down, second down, and third and nine. At the 11, new tailback Nick Baker coming in. Senior from Conover, North Carolina. Tight end on the right side will be Rashawn Green. Let's see what the Monarch can come up with here. They'll go back to pass, a little quick look in pass. And getting close to the end zone, he does not get it but he'll get the first down. Maryville looks like they have a bit of a simple little look in pattern. 
So it's inside to one with 9.40 left to go in this second quarter. Maryville up 7-3. Ooh, big tailback in there, number 45, Rashawn Green, the tight end. He's going to keep the ball, and he'll go into the end zone for the touchdown. Rashawn Green, 5'11", 238. So the score now is 9-7 with 9-19 left to go with the extra point. Getting ready to be kicked by Trevor Haggart. Haggart is, uh, Haggart is from Gastonia. Nice little town. High snap, and this one... Sails right and is good. Just barely making it, 10-7 the score. 9-19 left to go, the Monarchs in the lead, and we'll be right back for the kickoff. Getting ready for the kickoff right now. Pierre Watkins back deep along with Connor Chandler. This one's going to go to Watkins. He'll catch it at the 15 to the 20, 25. He'll stumble down at about the 24. And there it'll be first and 10. Ball at the 30-yard line. Let's see what uh, Maryville can do. And quarterback is Trevor Thomas. Nine men in the box for the Monarchs. Little handoff in about a two or three-yard gain for Maryville. Hawkins on the ball carrier, on the ball on the carry. Hawkins for Maribel from Jefferson City. Maribel with a uh, hurry up type offense, but again, uh, Maribel's not spreading anybody out at all. They've got every, the receivers covered one on one. And then right up the middle again, and they're not going to get much there. So 8.20 left to go in this third quarter. It'll be third and long for Maribel, leading, excuse me, they're down 10-7 to Methodist in this USA South Conference game. Mikel Santos going in for Maribel now. Far right side, receiver will be Drew Blair. Thomas going to look to the sideline for the play. Maryville has not had any passing game to note. In fact, the last pass was intercepted. It really hurt Maryville. And it's caught, and we're going to get a first down maybe. Let's see where the spot is. And now we've got a flag coming in from way back. The 13th penalty of the day.
the officials conferring, and they're also conferring with uh, the Methodist sideline. It's going to be short by about a yard looking at the spot if the penalty Again, uh, they're talking to the sideline, the Methodist sideline. So it'll be fourth down and one yard to go. So 7.30 left to go. Maryville decides to punt here at homecoming. There was no penalty. Kobe Prelo goes back. He's from uh, Pomplico, South Carolina. Good to snap. Punt sails nice, and it's going to be a fair catch. Caught at the 19 or 20 yard line. So 7.02 left to go. Ball over on downs to Methodist. Sixty-one degrees currently. So Methodist back on offense. And they'll go back to pass and looking to pass. And then sacked in the backfield is Bullens. Cumby with the sack. And that's a big sack. Be second down and eighteen. Ball back to the 11, make a 12-yard line. So with a little bit of pressure that time, Marable causes the sack. They'll put three receivers to one side and one the tailback or H-back goes in motion. They'll go back to pass, looking. Going to throw the little pass upfield. It's caught, and it's going to be a first down. And that's basically a timing pass. McNeil comes out uh, over the first down, and uh, well, he didn't get it. I'm sorry. It was the it was the uh, first down mark, and it was third down and eight. Pullins with Baker in the backfield, and incomplete. As the receiver, Xavier McNeil, went right, the ball went left. Not sure what, uh, maybe a miscommunication there. This will be fourth and eight. Maryville should get pretty good field position on this. And good pressure again by Maribel. Good punt. And it's a fumble and picked up by Methodist. The second turnover by Maribel. Clayton Ogle, the senior, couldn't come up with the the punt. And good field position for the Monarchs. And that's about where the last interception was that the Monarchs turned into seven points. 10-7 your score. Ball on the 37 yard line first and 10 for the Monarchs. Tailbacks looks like uh, Howard. Brandon Bullens hands the ball off to Baker. Baker turns it up and gets himself four yards. Baker 
brief uh, flare of tempers down there. Second and seven. Xavier McNeil needs to be a little more careful. And McNeil, then we got a flag come down. Another flag. Fourteenth flag of the day with 4.52 left to go. Maribel has an injured player down. Monarchs walking backwards. We'll see what the uh, injury is. I hope uh, the young man's okay. Kalen Davis is down on the field. And it is going to come off the field. A little limpy there. He'll come off under his own power and looks like he's getting stronger with each step. Score 10 to 7. The Monarchs are in the lead. 450 left to go. We'll have a very special guest today up here. Dr. Schrock's coming up today. Dr. Schrock, Eric Schrock will be with us today. That's a hold, so that's going to be a first down for Maribel. This is Don Story. So Maribel now with that fumble recovered by the Monarchs. Third and 20 at the 47. Four nineteen left to go in this second period at homecoming 10-7. The Monarchs will go back to pass. Throw the ball over the middle, knocked away. Fourth down. Four oh six left to go. And back deep will be Ogle. So on that turnover, the Monarchs did not uh, necessarily the Monarchs did not necessarily take advantage of it. So we get ready to go here with the punt. And this punt's going to go end over end. And it bounces uh, down to about the eight-yard line where it'll be first and ten for Maryland. We've got a special guest with me, Eric Schrock. Oncologist at the University of Tennessee. Thank you for showing up here to homecoming. Thank you for having me. Let's adjust that microphone. Um, you have a brother here also. I do. Who's a professor here at Marable College. I do. Not a twin, though. No. He's much better looking than you. <laughs> but I'm the smarter one. <laughs> <laughs> I'll tell him you said that. Uh, homecoming to you. You've been here many games. Uh, I know you like coming here. Uh, what is it about this level of play or the competition that you like here? It's just such a beautiful environment. It's just such a great time. Bring the family out. It's just a great day. Get to watch some good football. And the tailgating is just great. We well, love the tailgate. You bring a, a massive amount of tailgating with you. How big is your rig when you? It's 4,000 pounds. Okay. <laughs> It'll do a whole hog, which we have done today. It'll do a couple of salmon, which we've done, a bunch of pork butts. And uh, usually feed about 100 to 150, something like that. And uh, if anybody's hungry out there, 
you're welcome to it because there's well, a, I don't know. I think it's gone. I think it, it, I think it's all gone. You didn't save me any. No, we did. We did. Okay. We, said we, we put some back. We did put some back. So uh, we've got we've got a little bit left for you for you. <laughs> but it went quick. It went pretty quick. Say uh, five five yard run on second first down second down in five make it third and four. 250 left to go. Maryville at the end of the half here with uh, on the losing side of the score 10-7 right now. And Maryville going to try to pass the ball and they'll dump it out to the tight end. And it's going to be a first and 10 for Maryville plus getting out of bounds was Terry Stewart getting out of bounds. So, um, did you play any sports? I did in high school. I played football in high school, and I ran, uh, I ran track. Say, I thought you were going to say soccer. <laughs> I ran track. I'm just <laughs> Nothing kidding. wrong with soccer. No, Nothing wrong out there. You. In fact, uh, Maryville has a very good team. They certainly they do. a very good team. <laughs> Men's and women's. Yes, yes. Coached by Pepe Fernandez. Little dump pass to Bunch, and Bunch is going to get back to the line of scrimmage with 2.09 left to go. And no timeout called, although Maribel has three left. It should be the first down. Second down. It's a little cool weather. Nice for you guys out there, Tailgate. You do a lot of barbecuing for other other. We issues do. and we you do, do some uh, your professional barbecue. I call you that. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> we, do, uh, oh, go ahead. Uh, we do a couple of uh, charity events for New Hope, which I want to put a plug in for them. Please you do. guys should come out and support them. Um, we do black tie blue jeans. Uh, it's going to be in the in the fall. And coming up, it's uh, Hops for Hope. Hops and for Hope. That sounds like it. That's interesting. It's a it's a great it's a great uh, charity. A good time for everybody. It's just. Uh, Really a great thing that they do. How did you get into – I know you're an oncologist and, and everybody knows basically what that does, but how did you get into barbecuing? Well, I'm from Mississippi. That's what everybody does down there. <laughs> <laughs> we don't have mountains uh, unless you go down to the coast. I mean, that's what it, that's just what you do. <laughs> mountains on the coast, huh? <laughs> <laughs> but uh, it's something that uh, – actually, my brother Chad is really uh, the one that turned me on to it uh, – he took it out to California when he did graduate school out at Santa Cruz. And so he uh, took that out there. And uh, when he came back, uh, we decided to take it up a notch. We actually had a barbecue restaurant in town here for a couple of years called Boomers. And then it was 2008 uh, that got everybody, and then we shut it down after a couple of years. But we kept all our equipment and kept the big smoker and just keep it going. Well, after the timeout... If you'll stay with me a little bit. Sure. We've got halftime coming up. 131 left to go. Third down in 11. Marable with the ball down 10 7. Looking to the sideline for some instructions. Low 50 degree temperature. Bermuda grass. Nice field. Little wind now coming out of the north. So let's see if Marable can get something going with 131 left to go. They'll go back to pass. Here comes the blitz. And there it's we, ah. knocked away. Good defensive play over there by Roderick Christian. Oh, so Maribel will have to punt. Close. <laughs> now, you had salmon out there today. That salmon looked like it weighed 40 pounds, the one that you had all cooked out there. Well, actually, it was two 20-pounders. So it was 40 pounds. Okay. It was. They came from the shrimp dock, and uh, they've been a great thing to have here in Maribel. So, so glad to have those guys. Get a punt coming off here. Hub's getting ready to punt with 125 left to go. Methodist has two timeouts. And let's see, with a little wind behind his back, if Hugs can put a boom around. They're going to rush the punt, and he's going to get a short punt off, and it's going to take a Methodist bounce back to the 47-yard line. Two timeouts, 117 left to go. Methodist uh, throws uh, about 70% of the time. And I'm sure they're going to throw some more now. They've had some success. And if we, we've only had 15 penalties so far, so hopefully there'll be no penalties. And if they are, they'll go the other way. So um, tell me, Eric, 
your your profession being an oncologist and everything here in this area of the country how did you end up here uh actually it was because of my brother that okay. uh, teaches here at maryville college he came in 2002 and then uh, followed him the year later so we could have our kids you know raise our kids close to each other first and ten bullens will go back to pass looking over the big drops it over the middle coming across the center and then out of bounds into maryville territory at the 40, make it 36, seven yard line, is Wood coming all the way across the center. Come on up. So what would you do if you're Maryville's defense right now? I'd just rush, rush, rush. <laughs> <laughs> bring, bring the house. Bring the house. Okay, Bullens will go back to pass. Quick pass to the outside. Uh, Missed tackle and getting out of bounds, saving the timeout is Methodist. With 106 left to go. They got to get some pressure on that quarterback. <laughs> well, the one time he did, they uh, they did quite well with him. Yep. He's just picking you, us apart. If you're a coach, you'd be pulling your hair out when you can stop the clock the other team. Mm -hmm. This kid Mullins, a freshman, throwing the ball quite well. He'll go back to pass. Throws that quick sideline pass. Then they'll get the first down. About seven or eight yards down to the... 21 yard line, first and 10. That play took five seconds. Hmm. Sometimes you feel helpless as a coach. You know, you don't know what to do. Well, you know what to do. You just hope they execute. <laughs> Two wide outs left, one right. It's Howard in the backfield along with Bullens. Bullens gonna look over the defense. Get some time, pressure, get Time some to pressure. throw to the end zone. That's, yeah, that, perfect, perfect. And there was pressure, and he threw the ball out. The receiver zigged, it should have zagged, as they say. 57 seconds to go before halftime. Methodist up 10-7. They need about 10 more yards for a good attempt at their field goal. Their field goal kicker is about a 30, 35 yard ranger. So from the 21 yard line in the shotgun, Bullens looks right, Get getting a little swing pass left on the little naked screen, and it's Howard. He's going to get down. He's first down, but he's inside the 10. That's a little naked screen where you pull one, one man. First and goal, clock running. 45 seconds left. Going to throw this ball to the outside and incomplete. I always thought that was the naked bootleg. Is that the same thing? Same as the naked screen? Well, the bootleg is if you keep it. Oh, okay. He threw the ball and uh, everybody goes this way. One guy pulls the other way and he'll dump it. The whole idea is to pull the defense the other way. You know that. <laughs> and it worked. <laughs> yes, it did. That stops the clock with 40 seconds left. Back to pass, Bullens looking, gonna throw this ball on the outside, knocked away on a great play by Simeon Watson. Good Five job. foot seven, Simeon Watson, he's their, he's their height, we could defend him. He's our own little honey badger out there. Yeah. <laughs> and he was going up against the six one receiver, so third and goal at the seven. You got a special place for cornerbacks, that's what I played in high school. <laughs> So third down and goal. Man in motion, Prelo going left, right, then back the other way. Little screen again. Got him. And they're going to get him for no gain, and actually probably a loss, but he's in the middle of the field, which is, I'm sure, where they wanted to go. So fourth down, let's see what they do here. They call a timeout. Well, they're going to let the clock go down. They didn't call a timeout. Let the clock get down and probably kick a field goal. Fourth and goal at the nine. They'll take a timeout. And three seconds left on the clock. Been a good game so far. Maryville had a yes. real nice drive, 95 yards. The one turnover hurt them pretty bad. 
Uh, they scored the touchdown uh, Methodist did on it. So uh, both these teams are kind of slugging it out for homecoming. Been a great game so far. Very good. Where in Mississippi did you play high school football? At a little town called uh, Ridgeland, Mississippi, Madison Ridgeland. It's just outside of the central city of Jackson, or the capital, but right there Been in the center Jackson. state. Been to mm-hmm. Jackson many times. And so I actually did get to run, I ran track at uh, Millsaps. I went to Millsaps College as well there in Jackson and uh, ran uh, cross know, country over there. I know Millsaps well. The, ma- the majors or colonels, right? Uh, uh, the majors. We're Major. the majors, yes. It was uh, Colonel Millsap. <laughs> Major Millsap. Uh, extra, excuse me, field goal attempt. Low snap. This kick sails. And it is good right at the buzzer. 13 7 your score at halftime. Methodist gets three points right at the end and uh, we'll sail off into halftime and you'll be watching the honoring of the 1978 Maribel College football team. Uh, Don Story, thanks for filling in for a little bit. I appreciate it. You're going to stay here and I'm going to put the headset back on you in the third quarter, more than likely. Uh, Dr. Eric Strzok, thank you very much for yes, coming sir. up here. Yes, sir. Thank okay? you very much. It's a pleasure. I'm head back to the tailgate. Okay. And, <laughs> Have a, have a good, strong cup of tea for me. I will. <laughs> and it did rain today, and if you remember our bet. Oh, I think I owe you a <laughs> bottle of libation, I do believe. <laughs> yes, sir. Good see you. It's a pleasure. We'll be right back, everybody. Thank you.
Welcome back, everybody. George DeBobby here at Maryville College. Halftime score is Methodist 13, Maryville 7, as we get ready for second half kickoff. On the field right now is the 1979 football team as they're being recognized for their 40th year. Coach Fickert on the far left was the coach. Men in the black hat. Some notables down there. Good to see. Some local people. The 79 team celebrating their 40th anniversary. They finished with a record of 7-2, and two, including a 15-7 to seven win over rival Carson Newman just up the road. As a senior class, that team won 28 games and lost seven. The quarterback and captain was Coach, well, Barry Mathis. Barry's a, a full-time official here in the area. And we want to welcome them back for the uh, halftime show. And we'll get ready to go here in a little bit as Marable is down to Methodist 13 to 7. We'll be right back. Welcome back, everybody. George DeBobby here at Maribel College. Halftime score 13 to 7. With me, Dr. Tom Hart, the commissioner of the USA South. Uh, welcome. We love having you here all the time. George, as always, an honor <laughs> and a pleasure. Uh, USA South just continues to march along. Probably one of the premier conferences, if not the premier conference in Division Three, And uh, it's wonderful to see. You've got all kinds of things going on besides football. Well, today at Maryville, between the 200th uh, anniversary uh, soccer, volleyball. volleyball. <laughs> we've got uh, four conference schools here for volleyball. Our volleyball team is playing quad matches to get, you know, we, we're such a large conference. We want to try to make sure we minimize travel when we can, and volleyball is able to do that. Football is a one, you know, one one school visits the other, but uh, uh, a lot of activity, and it's been a, a joy to watch the, the the vibrancy and the people and the and the and the pageantry of uh, a 200th anniversary it's a it's it's a, it's, a, it's an honor and uh you know what if you look at the tailgate area out here it's just packed i mean for a, a small division three school it's to me one of the best venues as we get ready to kick off here maryville will receive the ball it'll be taken at the ten. It's a fair catch so uh lots of tailgating wherever there's homecoming but you know if it's a saturday afternoon in america if you're not watching the Big Box University, you can come and watch some really good football Division Three. I mentioned to the officials, uh, speaking to them prior to the game, that uh, probably the biggest challenge is trying to watch the game and not try to chase some of that uh, beautiful, sm you know, the, the smell of uh, barbecue. If you're here after the game, I'll take you down to the best barbecue down there. <laughs> Dr. Schrock and his brother, Dr. Schrock, mm -hmm. one's an oncologist and one's a biology professor here. They have a 400-pound rig out there. So uh, they do it right. They do it. They do it right. They were up here a little while ago. First and ten, we get ready to go. And uh, you want to sit with me for a little bit, or you need to go? Oh, I'm I'm good for a couple minutes. All George. right, I'll stand here right here with you. That's Mr. Bunch for Maribel, getting some good yardage right up the middle. And uh, you always come back at football after half and wonder what adjustments did the coach make. And most of the time, they don't make any. So. <laughs> You know, when you have such large squads, it's hard to, to, to try to fine-tune with, with so many people that you've got to, you know, worry about. And you can find a couple things on film, but for the most part, you you got to stick with the game plan that you, 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 you spent a week preparing for, right? Trevor Thomas, the starting quarterback here in the second half. We get ready to go. Marvel with uh, double slots on the right side, double on the left. Back to pass. Going to be flushed out of the pocket, and that ball will be thrown incomplete. Be third and short. 
Um, what's going on with the with this conference as far as uh, any adjustments, any new things going on? What's happening in the USA South? Well, the biggest thing we've got right now, George, is we're uh, working towards um, proposing legislation for the, NC the NCAA convention, uh, trying to reduce the amount of time institutions have to spend becoming Division Three members. Uh, we've got uh, Pfeiffer and Brevard both, of course, of joining us, and they, they were granted a waiver this year, so next year they'll be full members and for they, us. And they can go into the NCAA tournaments and stuff? They can. And, um, but, they, but they were granted a waiver... And Bush gets the first down for Maribel. They were granted a waiver so that the process, which in theory takes five years, they were able to do in four. Tell me why that's important. Uh, anytime you have an institution that, that's trying to recruit and retain student athletes, you want they want access to NCAA championships, and that's what it's all about. Uh, it's certainly one of the things. That's and why Maryville got into a conference as well, because for years we were independents and uh, had to. Uh, rely on the at-large bid, but now in a conference, you have a, kids have something to look for. Yeah, and, and you can, can somewhat control your own destiny. It's nice pass down the sideline goes Watkins down to the 15, and a very nice touch pass by Trevor Thomas gets Maryville in scoring position. So Maryville opens up with a nice little drive. Ball at the 13-yard line, first and 10. Maribel down 13-7, opening minute and a half of the third quarter. From the shotgun. And we're going to have movement on the line. That is the 16th penalty of the day. The, uh, but who keeps track? Exactly, <laughs> exactly. A lot of flags thrown up. The... Um, But institutions, back to our point about the AQ, institutions want to be able to know if you win a conference AQ championship. AQ automatic qualifier. Automatic qualifier. If you win a conference championship, you want to be able to get to the NCAA tournament. And uh, Maryville's had some good success in those in those places. In so the past you win the seven. conference championship, it's an automatic bid. Right, right. And um, so schools that are looking to join, clearly they're going to want to try to do that sooner rather than later. Back to pass, a little touch pass into the corner, overthrown the intended receiver. It'll be second and 15. Merrill knocking at the door. Not a bad day. It's finally cool here in the, here in Tennessee. I was going to mention, usually when I'm here earlier in the seasons, it's a little bit warmer. Now, this is great football weather, and the, and, the, and the rain staying away is helping us with that, you know, keeping the turf um, pretty crisp. Thomas looking to the sideline for instructions. I'm going to ask you a little bit about turf here in a second. Mm -hmm. Okay, this is Bermuda natural turf. Uh, sand under the ground drains very, very well. Hand off to Bunch into the bunch, so to speak, and Bunch is going to go nowhere. It'll be third down in 50. Artificial turf versus uh, natural turf. Are there any pros and cons to it as far as the conference sees? Well, the biggest piece uh, for the institutions that have artificial turf is their ability to use it in multiple ways. Uh, lacrosse, soccer, uh, especially s since both those sports have men and women. I mean, there's a lot that's of important. It's, 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 it's being taxed pretty much all year long. So the, the schools that have that turf, they're just able to you know, rely on it and don't have to worry too much about protecting it. Now, Maryville's got a good situation that they've got a different field for soccer than they do for football. So they're, you know, having... Back to pass, Thomas throws the ball to the outside, and there's going to be a flag coming in from the back judge. It'll be pass interference. That number 17? I'm sorry? Is that number 17? That's 16. Yeah, 17. But, yeah. Number, number 17. Officials do a great job. You know that as well as I do. Um, but it, sometimes it's tough. you got to call it. Mm -hmm. I mean, you just have to. And I, what's hard to be an official is not to get caught up in the activity, the, the excitement of the game, and not inject yourself. And, you know, one of the guys that was inducted here for the 40th year, the 79 Barry Mathis, a longtime NCAA official. Uh, Roy Kramer lives here, mm -hmm. the commissioner uh, from the SEC, the, the uh, founder of the Bowl Championship Series and the playoff system. So 
lots of officials, it's hard to be an official. So they do a great job. You know, it's one of the things, George, that right now the Division Three Commissioners Association, we're, we're, we've got a task force and are working, looking at officiating uh, in general, just trying to get more young people into officiating because it's not one of those things that everybody wants to do anymore. And Ball put at the three, first and goal. Handoff, and we got a touchdown, Marable. Clean handoff, clean snap, touchdown behind the Hogs as they call him up front. So Marable uh, now ties the score, 13-13, with an extra point coming up, and they'll go for one as Ian Hubbs gets ready to kick the extra point. The hold is Clayton Ogle. So go ahead, uh, we were talking... Well, about the officials and yeah, trying to get idea, young, just, yeah, young officials. And, and not just in football, but in all, in all field sports. Uh, right now, there's, it's almost to a crisis stage where we, you, know, you need more young folks that are interested in becoming officials. And you can't play the game if you don't have officials. The extra point's good. 14-14, 12-08 left to go. Excuse me, 14-13, 12-08 left to go. Maryville over Methodist in a USA South Conference game. With me, the president of the USA South Conference, uh, Dr. Tom Hart. Um, so, and, and officials, they make some decent money. They obviously have day jobs, most of them, but uh, it's a pretty good uh, hobby, so to speak. Oh, and, and, and the fact that they're able to pretty much guarantee that they can have two or three nights a week make it important for them. Coach Wilkes out there, who uh, was a former head football coach here. The, uh, between the homecoming... The Wall of Fame, and uh, in the in the class of '79, there were quite a few individuals that were recognized at halftime and the, during all these uh, the festivities here. At the yeah, and it's it's homecoming's always good, but uh, you know it's uh, it's a nice community. And every place that I've been to in the USA South uh, for football and basketball, and it, there's it's such a, a a community of people and uh, sports fans. Methodist with the ball to the 30 and about to the 35 and we have a flag number 17 coming in from the back judge um, Fayetteville for instance where Methodist is nice community mm -hmm. military families all over the place um, ev everywhere you go uh, division three football division three basketball soccer hockey field hockey but you know do we have field hockey we do not we do not lacrosse we yep. have men's and women's a everywhere you go there's a chance to for the community to get involved uh, not just the parents of the athletes but you find out most of these people here are just from the community yeah a couple weeks ago i saw maryville uh, at brevard and the brevard folks coming out in, 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 in strong numbers to support you know a, a local college team and that's a nice new it's a new school for the conference yep they're, they're uh, in fact, they're one of the ones that just recently received their, uh, by next year, they'll be a full member of the conference and able to compete for championships. How many uh, members do we have? Now, so, we, we have some that are all sports, or, or men's, women, there's some women's only sports, let me put it yeah, that yeah, way. Yeah, a couple, we have four single genders. Okay. Uh, four uh, single gender institutions, and then 14 uh, that, that uh, compete in co-ed sports. And um, eight of them are uh, football playing schools. Howard for about two or three yards to the 17-yard line. So in many ways, George, we've, we've kind of got three sets of schools, right? Because football institutions uh, have, to, have to have a developed staff, athletic training. And then you've got our schools that are co-ed but don't have football. And then you've got the, uh, the, co the schools that are single gender. Like Agnes Scott. And there's a quick pass to the outside for a short game. Yeah, Agnes Scott and Wesleyan are in Georgia. Yeah. And then uh, Meredith and Salem are in Salem. North Carolina. See, Salem, I don't know that much about. Um, I don't believe I've seen – I haven't done anything on the Internet or radio for Salem. And, and a lot of that has to do with the fact that our conference for women are in divisions. Okay. We're in two separate divisions because there's 18 schools. And so you only play those schools from your division until the tournament time. And that ball may have been dropped, but I don't think uh, the officials saw that it was dropped. 
And let's see where the spot is. Spot looks like it'll be fourth down. Um, no chance for replay here, huh? <laughs> Electronic replay at the Division Three level is a challenge from uh, angles, uh, angles of the play, as well as the technology of uh, hardware. To You'd have see to have see seven it. cameras. And here goes the punt. 14-13, your score. Maribel up here in the third quarter over Methodist. 10-17 left. Again, pressure on the punt. Punt caught at the 36, and that's about where the receiver, Clayton Ogle, will end up. Marable takes over first and 10. Well, a touchdown and a stop on the, on the first drive for, Mer for Mer uh, Methodist yeah. makes us think that uh, perhaps there was some tweaking at halftime done by Marable. Yeah. You know, I've been in quite a few halftime speeches uh, and adjustments uh, over the years. It's 30, almost 30 years now. And uh, it's amazing what gets done and doesn't get done. And I know when I played, uh, played at Appalachian State, we would break off into little small groups and do our adjustments and then come back a couple of minutes before we had to go out on the field and kind of get a mega dose of adjustments. Dump pass incomplete by Trevor Thomas and another penalty. Is that 19? We have the 19? I'm, I'm starting to lose count. <laughs> Gosh, it's every play it seems like. From where it would is, it looks like it'll be offense, defensive holding. Illegal man downfield. An eligible player. Oh, goodness. And as a coach, that would hurt you. I had up here before Coach Don Story, uh, Don Story, legendary coach in this area, and uh, very committed to community service and uh, spreading it around, so to speak. And uh, we were talking about the penalties and how it's a drive killer and mm -hmm. motivation killer. Um, how's uh, the, the administration going? Uh, do, are you adding any more people to help you and, and uh, Mike Christie out? And well, we've got a couple of folks that, from a conference office standpoint, I think the thing that's interesting about the USA South is we've... Uh Oh, big handoff on the end around to the tight end, is, uh, Terry Stewart. The fact that we're, uh, our, my office is located in Rome, Georgia, and we have an office manager that helps with the finances and those things. But Mike Christie, my, the associate commissioner, he lives in Pittsburgh, North Carolina. So we, we do a lot of talk by phone, um, you know, some video conferencing. And then our digital media uh, person, Kaisa Swanson, she lives in Chattanooga, Tennessee. Um, so the three of us are kind of in different locations, but you're able through the work of you know technology, technology. And, and file sharing, we're able to do our work uh, pretty seamlessly. Second down and 12, handoff to Maryville's bunch up the middle. He's going to give out two, maybe three. It'll be the third or fourth down. It'll be fourth down. Had a chance earlier, George, to uh, speak with uh, Randy Lambert. Coach uh, Lambert, Coach yeah. Lambert, and uh, he, he showed me the new baseball facility uh, that Maryville debuted here recently. Yes, it's uh, right there. Yep. If you look over by the flags behind that building, uh, those of you watching, that is the new uh, multi-million dollar baseball facility. Locker rooms, meeting rooms, a uh, you know, place for athletic training. Very impressive. Third and nine. Throw, a nice throw, but it's going to be just a bit short. No, actually, it's caught, but it's out of bounds, so it'll be fourth down. And those facilities are the things, George, that we, as commissioner, we, we always want to see what are be, what's being done on a campus to help improve, uh, you know, the student experience. Well, you may know, uh, you know, Coach Lambert right now, we mentioned a longtime basketball coach, uh, one of the most winningest Division Three coaches of all time, uh, is here trying to raise money for uh, the uh, day in and day out, trying to raise money for those enhanced facilities. I think uh, the softball and soccer facilities are the ones that are going to get uh, the next infusion of money. Nice little punt. And a late fair catch called by Prelel. So Methodist down 14-13 with 8.27 left to go. will take over on their own 27-yard line. Couldn't think of a better person to uh, head up the fundraising than uh, Coach Lambert. I mean, he knows so many people, and he's he loves interacting. He's uh, been here so long. You grow friends, right? Friends before funds. 
Well, it's funny you say that. I mean, I spent uh, 20 plus years doing his basketball games and, you know, what I gained out of all those 20 years was a friend. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's nice to to do that here. And uh, it's nice to see that he's been successful in in doing that. Little quick handoff to the inside goes Baker and Baker gets to the 30 yard line with 819 left to go. Third quarter, homecoming. Um, your travel, you, you travel every weekend, I'm sure. Um, tell me a little bit about your travels. Well, uh, I mentioned I was in Brevard a couple weeks ago. Um, earlier this year, I had back-to-back weekends where we were able to catch doubleheader football games. Uh, Huntington played in the afternoon, followed by LaGrange at night. And a week later, saw Methodist, who's on the field here today, play, uh, followed by a game that night at Averett. Uh, so I was able to see four conference football schools uh, within a you know two day period, and been to Brevard, been here, and we'll continue to you know especially as the conference uh, playoff picture begins to come into focus. Yes, uh, be able to figure out where to where to go to 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 catch a game that's going to be of uh, import. Third and one. Howard the eye back. He'll probably run the ball. Big first down conversion attempt here. For Methodist down by one point to Marable. He's going to run into the little mesh and uh, going to be very close. I don't think he got the first down. Marable stuffed the mesh with uh, linebackers and he's going to be short. Uh, no gain. Do they want to go for it or not? And that. Uh, the front unit is coming out, George. I'm watching the play clock run down a little bit. 6.55 left to go. 15 on the play clock. Marable down 14-13. Always want to be aware of some trickery here, but uh, the main thing is if you're the receiver back here, uh, now the official's going to call timeout. As the uh, down indicator appears to be malfunctioning across the way. A little bit of drizzle now coming down. It's supposed to start to rain about 4 o'clock, and... Uh, it's getting there, five of. When I started the day in Georgia, of course, you, you, you talk about travel. I like to look at the map and see what I'm in for. Yeah. You know, where, where's the weather going to hit? And imagine I'll get some on the way back back to Georgia today. Tell me a little bit about how your, your background, how you got here, and how you ended up being uh, the commissioner of such a great conference. Sure. Uh, started as a coach. Started coaching basketball. Uh, first at the... Division I level, then uh, junior college, professional level in the Continental Basketball Association, and then Division Three, which is really where, the, where my love is. Uh, there's, no, there's no confusion of why the student athletes are here. Uh, that's for sure. It's Ogle back, and he'll let the ball drop, and it goes another 15 yards, and that'll give you a gray hair if you're a coach. And, you know, what you have to remember, these are kids. Right. And, uh, you know, you want them to be perfect, and uh, – you have to remember they're, they're 18, 19, 20-year-old kids, and they're going to They're working on decision-making. They're playing out I'm here. Sure. It's not professional. They're playing. And, you know, these kids, we talk about divisions. They're not on scholarship, uh, athletic scholarships. Any scholarship money they get is for their academics or community service or something else, but no athletic scholarships. And that's the part that drew me to Division Three. This is my 26th year in Division Three athletics and administration. And, um, you know, from coaching to athletic director and then uh, conference commissioner. So it's been, a, it's, been a, it's been a great run. Hand off to Bunch. Bunch turns it upfield. Going to get across to 25 to the 26 or 27-yard line. First and 10 for Marable with 6.18 left to go. It's a huge possession for both teams uh, in that if you're Methodist, you certainly don't want to give up any points here. Certainly not a touchdown. And if you're Marable, you want to put a seven points on the board and try to draw away from this quick strike Methodist team. Always want to try to get a, get it to be more than a one one score game, right? Going to throw this ball downfield, and it is going to be caught at the 35 yard line in a good comeback catch by Pierre Watkins. No penalties. And uh, if you're a receiver, heads up play by the receiver to come back. If you're the defender, it's a tough 
call to defend, play to defend because you're trying to stay with the receiver and all of a sudden he stops and you can't put on your brakes that quick. Right. And he's making you reverse field because oh, yeah. he's coming right back at you. So first and 10 for Maribel down to the 37-yard line of Methodist. A little backside handoff to Bunch. Bunch going to be held up quickly by Roderick Christian. No gain. On that last long play, the quarterback was able to roll out, gave himself some time to be able to escape pressure to be able to throw that ball deep. That worked out well. Well, Maribel has two young quarterbacks. Uh, they're still learning, and uh, one way you can help them as a coach and make them feel more comfortable is to have them roll out a little bit. A young fan right there in front of us. A little quick pass to the backside on the backside screen and dropped by Terry Stewart. Marvin's pass is incomplete, intended for Terry Stewart. This fall we've got uh, six different conference championships, so that'll also take up some travel. We'll, uh, North Carolina Wesleyan is hosting our uh, men's and women's cross country. And then men's and women's soccer and women's volleyball, of course, we don't know. The highest seed will host those. Right. Um, so we'll see where that goes. And then football is just a regular uh, regular season champ is our uh, the person, this, this institution right. that runs to the NCAAs. Little backside draw and uh, losing the ball was Marable. Did Bunch get the ball back? He did not. The third turnover for Marable. And that's uh, another thing you don't want to happen. You know, he never really had the ball. He, he kind of didn't quite put it away. I don't know if the handoff was clean or not. But in any event, it's first and 10 for Methodist with 440 left to go third period, 14-13. Coach, um, media-wise, um, most do webcast, some do radio. Anything else going on? Well, the biggest piece right now is, of course, streaming. Uh, institutions are trying to find ways to connect to those alums that have internet connections and they want to see the game from a, you know, a reasonably high def. And catching the pass is Methodist Woods, and Woods going to get down the field. And uh, there's a flag on the sideline. It looks like a flag. I would say it's going to be a face mask or something like that. Yeah, personal there foul is. face mask. And that'll put Marable down even farther, or Methodist even farther down into Marable territory. The coach in basketball my whole life, George, of course, the, the, the two keys we'd always talk about are free throws and defense to helping you win. In football, turnovers and penalties are the two things you have to try to avoid. Just too many free free yards moving down the, yeah, and down the field. Especially when you have um, teams that are, you know, even like this, uh, a penalty could make the difference in the game. First and ten. Handoff to Howard. Howard gets a couple. Recruiting-wise, um, when they go out on the road to recruit, you know, I know basketball and football well because that's what I cover. Uh, lots of time, personal time for coaches uh, to go out. Probably lots of money they spend on their own uh, to, to recruit. But uh, that's what puts wins on the field sometimes, how you recruit. Five in the backfield, little stop and go. And it's going to be a sack for Maryville. You know, a minute ago we were talking about the, the – idea in the use of video and streaming yes. for, for teams when they play but that's also, you mentioned recruiting it's also becoming a primary way to keep coaches at home at night is that they're able to see quite a bit from uh, the video right. portions, they don't need to go and actually watch a kid up plus, close and plus the cell phone they can communicate yep. with the kids, yep. back to pass and it's going to be another sack Two in a row for Marable. And uh, both times the initiator was Corey Jackson, or Ja'Cory Jackson, number 94. 
And uh, cleaning up was Ronald Eccles kind of cleaned up there. Yeah, that the, the uh, social media is one of the things that Division Three's really been working on to try to loosen it up so that coaches can communicate, you know, with many of the ways that we all communicate anymore. And uh, I think they're going to continue to do so. Fourth down and 19. So it'll be a pass play, I would think. Bullens goes back to pass. Going to throw this ball to the outside, and it is going to be intercepted. And coming out of the end zone is Maribel. With the ball, and getting knocked out of bounds is Brandon Cloyd, the junior from Hardin Valley High School in Knoxville, Tennessee. And that uh, one fumble turnover for Maribel. Method it takes the ball down and they turn over and it's another interception. Turnovers. And the game remains a one possession game. Yep. 14-13 your score. 2.20 left to go in the third period. Back in a quarterback for Maribel. Trevor Thomas, quick handoff. To Bunch, Bunch uh, gets himself a bunch. And uh, Bunch is an interesting story. Last year broke his ankle here in the third or fourth game. I mean, when the crowd cleared and uh, or the players cleared, you could see his ankle was kind of going in the wrong direction. He's made pretty much a complete recovery. And he's just from up the road at Bean Station. Nice story. He seems to be running downhill a lot. He gets those legs moving in the in the, in the the pack goes with them. It's interesting to see some of the players grow, too. I mean, you know, start to get more confidence. Back to pass. Thomas, nice long pass downfield. And over the hemp stretched hands of a streaking Connor Chandler. Uh, Connor Chandler right there, number eight. And uh, Trevor Thomas were boyhood friends. Those are special moments when you can have a, a childhood friend and you connect, you know, connect down the road. Well, each play, uh, you know, uh, players start to mature with each play, get a little more experience. And looks like a blitz coming on, third down and four. Trevor Thomas from Lindale, Georgia. He'll go back to pass, looking, looking, going to throw the ball downfield. And that's, oh, now they're going to call a pass interference. It looked like they got their feet tangled up, but uh, I'm not the official. It was a well-thrown ball. Very, no, no, very nice. No throw. chance for anybody to catch it with the, uh, with the tangle there at the, 46 yard line. What I liked about that throw, it uh, was kind of on the mark and uh, looked like it was in a position where only the receiver could get it. So the officials are conferring. You mentioned Trevor Thomas uh, is from Lindale, Georgia. Yes. And he went to Pepperell High School. That's uh, they're in our they're in my county. In in, in, the, Rome, in the Rome, Rome area. Rome area. Yeah. Right. Fans don't like it, but it looked like a fair call from here. Yeah, I got a punt here. Unfortunate for Maryville, but there's nothing you can do. An incidental contact like that is not a penalty. And they but, got they got mixed up with each other just a, a moment after the ball was released. So by the time they fell to the ground, the ball you know was going to be 15 yards past them. It's hard to call that. And there's a high punt. And no fair catch made, and going to the ground 
back to where he got it at the 30-yard line. It will be Methodist, so 114 left to go. Third period, Methodist 13, Maribel 14. It will be first and 10 for Methodist. Dr. Hart, thank you for taking some time with me. Always a pleasure. George, I enjoy enjoy every moment of it. And I'm looking forward to when I can do the USA South game of the week. (laughs) Down the road, right? Pleasure, my friend. Okay. That was Dr. Tom Hart spending some time up here at homecoming. And in the interim, Methodist ran a play and got a yard, second and nine. Waning seconds of the third quarter. Methodist down by one. Back to pass. Quarterback going to run to the outside. Going to dump the ball, and it is caught for a short gain at the 40-yard line. Caught by Jamar Moore. Oh, that is a first down. 30 seconds left to go in this third period. 14-13 your score. Marable up by one. Into the game for Methodist is Tariq Davis, 6'3", 170. And he's going to line up against. And we got a sack right up the middle. Comes Austin Smith, the freshman defensive lineman, 6'1", 250, from Marietta, Georgia. And that is the end of the third quarter here at Maribel. Maribel College leading Methodist 14-13. And we would like to thank our sponsors now as well. Our key sponsors for Maribel College this season, Blunt Partnership, Ken Joe Markets, Go Tees, Premier Transportation, LeConte Wealth Management, Airport Hilton, and Firehouse Subs. Please support these local businesses and thank them for making Blunt County and the Maribel community such a special place for all Maribel College, its staff, administration, and, of course, its students. 1413, I'll take a quick break. We'll be right back. Welcome back, everybody. George DeBobby here. LaGrange starting the fourth quarter with the ball on their own 32-yard line. Bullens back to pass. Got to throw the ball quickly, and it's incomplete. Good rush by Marable that time. Uh, pressured by Ja'Cory Jackson coming right up the middle. Corey Jackson having a good day today. Heading into the game right now, Blaine Miller, a freshman, third and 18. And uh, we've got a delay of game penalty. Third and 23. Thank 
Back to pass, that was Mullins. So it'll be fourth down, 23. Got some quick stats for you here. Scott, stop the Monarchs on that play. And I'll get you some stats here quickly. Good pressure, good punt, end over end. Going to sail over the head. No, caught by Ogle back. And he's going to get slammed down at the 25-yard line where it'll be first and 10 for Marable with 13, 14, 39 left to go for fourth period. So Marable gets a chance uh, at the ball. Marable looking to start the fourth quarter with Trevor Thomas at the helm. Going to take the ball, quick spin, another spin, and Thomas gets dropped down for a little bit of a loss. Not much protection there for him. Trying to look up the... Uh, some stats, uh, penalty yardage, uh, almost 200 yards when you combine both teams. Second in 13. Thomas give to the tight end on the end around, man in motion. Going to get back to the original line of scrimmage, I believe, was Stewart. New wrinkle for Marable. The tight end end around. The second and 13. Well, second, make it third down and 10. Bunch the tailback behind quarterback Trevor Thomas. Thomas back to pass, looking, gonna roll. Gonna throw the ball up, incomplete. The pass wasn't uh, caught by Clayton Ogle. Saw one of the Maryville linemen trying to pull, didn't quite get out there fast enough to give enough protection for the quarterback, Thomas, to throw the pass. So incomplete fourth down. Back deep is Kobe Prelo. I believe that the turnover situation for And good pressure by Methodist, and this punt's going to be end over end. And it's going to roll down to the 40, make it 37, 36-yard line. And that's where Methodist will take over with 13 minutes left to go in the game. Maryville up 14-13 on this blustery, cool kind of day. Wet a little earlier in the day. Supposed to get rain at about 4, but uh, have not got it. But it's... Uh, Starting to chill up a little bit. Maryville seven for 18 passing. Methodist eight for 30. Maryville 115 yards passing. Methodist 173. Methodist little Iowa pass underneath. Gets about a yard or two. That's actually a pass. Looks, people will call it a lateral, but it's a pass when you throw it forward. Three yard gain. 
Second down and seven ball at the 39-yard line. 12.30 left to go in the game. Maribel 14, Methodist 13. Maribel unbeaten, excuse me, has not won a game yet this year. And we're going to get a timeout by Methodist. Maribel feels they're very close to putting it all together. 13 first downs by Methodist, 12 by Maribel. It's now 60 degrees here. Feels a lot cooler than that. Maybe 50 degrees. Coming out of the timeout, Methodist will line up. Methodist looking to erase that one-point deficit. Second down and seven. Going to hand off to Howard. Howard, uh, maybe a yard. Third and seven. Brandon Bullens, uh, 19 of 31, for 176 yards, has a third and seven facing him. Going to send in man in motion from left to right. That's McNeil. We'll go back to pass. Bullens going to throw the ball downfield to McNeil, and McNeil makes the catch. Came out of the backfield, and nobody covered him over at the Maribel 40-yard line. He was the man in motion. Ronald Eccles coming out for Maryville. In goes Brandon Lurie, a freshman from Kingston, Tennessee. First and 10 at the Maryville 40. Mullins back to pass, looking to throw right out to the, uh, to the side, and boom! And uh, getting a few extra yards, breaking a tackle or two, is uh, big number 25, Tracy Fusilier, 5'8", 205. Well, they get two yards on that play. Eleven eighteen left to go. Bullens going to hand off. Coming to the outside is Devontae Howard. And Howard's going to get uh, two yards. Down to the Marable 30 six-yard line. Howard, the ball carrier. Howard, uh, 42, 43 yards so far today. 10.50 left to go in the game. Marable up by one, and Methodist driving in Marable territory. Bullens looks to pass. And he's going to be sacked back at the, across the 40-yard line. And right there at the bottom of the pile with the sack was number 92, Austin Smith, the freshman. So third down and 12. Make it fourth. Well, they will punt Methodist and getting... The punter is Haggerty Ogle back at the 10 yard line. Look for some kind of skullduggery. Always a little high snap, high punt. Ogle gonna go ahead and that goes out of bounds way upfield here. <laughs> the official being shadowed there by uh, Ogle. So Maryville's defense holds. It'll be first and 10. 
at their 20-yard line. Maribel leads 14-13 with 9.56 left to go. Quarterback, Trevor Thomas, six feet tall, 160, will take the snap. And off to Bunch. Bunch going to get a few. Spins, breaks a tackle, still going. Going to get across the 30 and out to the 32 or 33-yard line. Jacob Bunch uh, now with uh, 85 yards rushing. Ball out to the 32, first and 10. Clock continues to run. Maribel up by one, 14-13. Thomas resets the tight end, Terry Stewart. Thomas hands off to Bunch. He'll swing to the outside. Behind his blockers, cuts upfield. He'll get to the 39 or 40. That's going to get him about eight yards to the 39, and it's going to be seven-yard gain. Maribel would like to put some points on the board here. Second and let's call it uh, a long three. Trevor Thomas sends Arnett in motion. It's Bunch into the mesh. And Bunch gets uh, maybe a yard. Behind the blocking of uh, Ronald Villalobos. Villalobos, excuse me, third and a long one. Trevor Thomas, be a good time to see him run. He'll look to the sidelines. And he'll hand it off to Bunch, and Bunch powers through, puts his head down and gets the first down to the 45-yard line. 8.08 8.08 left to go. Bunch, first and 10. Ninety nine yards for Bunch. Maribel will hand the ball off. It's Trevor Thomas keeping the ball, gets to the outside, and he'll get a couple of yards. He was due for a run and picks up a couple of yards. Let's see where they set it. Get back to the line of scrimmage. It'll be second and 10. 7.30 left to go in this game. Maribel up by one, 14-13. Maryville looking for its first conference win. Sidelines signaling the plays. Eight on the play clock. Thomas has to hurry here. He'll hand the ball off. And turning it upfield and getting to the 50-yard line is Maryville's Trevin Thrower, the freshman running back from Sylvester, Georgia. Third and five, ball at the 50-yard line. 6.45 left to go in this game. Maryville up by one. Thomas still the quarterback. Clayton Ogle in motion right to left. Thomas with the option throw. First down to Terry Stewart, the tight end, and Stewart to the 40. Keeps on going to the 35. And finally, the whistle blows. Stewart, 6'2", 230, with a nice pass from quarterback Trevor Thomas. That gets the first down at the 621 mark. The ball will be placed at the Methodist 33-yard line. First and 10 for Maribel. And we've got an official stoppage. saying that number eight 
Andrew Collins coming off to make that Connor Chandler uh, needs to adjust his equipment somehow. 6.05 left to go in the game. Maribel up by one, 14-13 at the 33-yard line of Methodist. Bunch with the ball. He'll get to the outside, and Bunch still going. Bunch is going to get close to the 30. He'll get about two yards. Second down and eight. Wide to the left side goes Collier and Chandler. To the right side, here will be Pierre Watkins. Tailback is Bunch. Back to pass. Thomas looking. Going to throw the ball deep downfield. And just over the outstretched hands of Connor Chandler. Thomas threw that ball in a pretty good spot there, making sure that the defender could not get to it. Five oh nine left to go. The clock stopped with the incompleted pass. Third down and seven. Maribel at the Meredith's 31-yard line. They lead 14-13. Thomas with the handoff to Bunch to the outside. Bunch breaks a tackle down the sideline to the 20 yard line. He'll get the first down. And uh, Devontae White tried to make the tackle and came up empty, but for the shoe of Jacob Bunch. First and 10 for Maribel. 4.55 left to go in the game. The uh, crowd starting to get into it here. Austin Burke wide out to the left, along with T.J. Coleman. Thomas with the handoff to Bunch. He'll cut it up the middle to the 10, to the 5. Touchdown, Maribel! Cut it off the left side, the right side, and into the end zone for a touchdown. Bush goes over 100 yards rushing. Bunch, excuse me. That makes it 20 to 13. And that was a good drive by Maryville. And uh, Trevor Thomas at the helm of that drive. 80 yards on the drive. Extra point going to be critical here. Extra point good, and Maribel goes up by eight with 4.32 left to go in the game. Maribel leads 21-13 as the rain starts to come down. We'd like to thank our premier sponsors. It's Blunt Partnership, Ken Joe Markets, Goatees, Premier Transportation, LeConte Wealth Management, Airport Hilton, and Firehouse Subs. Hey, support these local businesses and thank them for making Blunt County and Maribel such a special place for its Maryville College staff, administration, and of course all of its students. And Maryville takes the lead with 4.32 left to go. Trevor Thomas uh, now with 71 yards passing. Bunch, 130 yards rushing. Baker and Prelo back deep for Methodist. This one's going to sail short again down to the 15-yard line and getting to the outside. Prelo uh, not quite to the 30-yard line. Tackle made by Austin Moore, sophomore. Right here, played right here at uh, Maribel High School. Clock running. 
the play clock running. The game clock at 428. In last game, Methodist pulled out a last second win over Bavard. Can they do it again? Back to pass. Bullens being chased and knocked away. Good job on the defense over there by Simeon Watson. Second and 10. Those are two nice drives by Maribel in this game. Uh, one was 95, that one was 80. Let's see if the defense can pull through here. Bullens back to pass, looking, looking. Going to throw the ball downfield and it is going to be knocked away. And I liked uh, what Simeon Watson did there, number 17. Uh, he saw the ball go long, left his man to give help to the safety, and that young man wants to play some football. All five foot seven of him. Third down and ten. Big play for both teams. Mullins, make that uh, Bullens from the shotgun. Goes back to pass, looking. Going to throw that little quick pass and caught, but not quite to the first down. It's going to be fourth down. And it was caught by Xavier McNeil. And the defender was Simeon Watson. And he's going to be fourth down. And they probably are going to go for this. Clock running at the 350 mark. Bullens goes back to pass, looking. Going to throw this ball out of bounds, and the ball goes over on downs. Good defense on this right side here, close to the bench. They chucked the receivers so they couldn't get anywhere. The quarterback, Bullens, had to look to the other side, threw it into the bench, basically into his side, and the pass was incomplete. All over on downs at the 340 mark. Marable now leading 21-13. Methodist still has two timeouts as the rain comes down. And uh, on the homecoming crowd here, capacity crowd, capacity uh, tailgaters, it's just crowded all the way around the field on the far side. Hand off to Bunch. Bunch breaks a tackle, and he's going to get to the 30-yard line. Time becoming a factor now. It's still a one score a game. Eight points would tie the game for Methodist, but Maribel's going to hold this ball as long as they can. Methodist with two timeouts, but Maribel has the ball second down and six. Thomas, and we got movement. Two fifty two left to go. Clock stops with the penalty. Ball back to the 37 yard line where it's second down and eight. Clock running. Trevor Thomas going to manage the clock now. Hands the ball off to Bunch. Bunch pounds his way across the 40 yard line. And we get a timeout by Methodist with 2.27 left to go. So Methodist will have one timeout left. That's 
Third and five when uh, we come out of the timeout with 2.27 left to go as the rain starts to come down. Maribel needs one more first down. Jacob Bunch, 140 yards on 24 carries, 5.8 yards per carry. What will Merrill will do here on third and five? Thomas, the quarterback, Bunch. Behind him, Stewart shifts, and it's going to be Bunch to the outside. Bunch following his blockers. Bunch gets the first down and goes out of bounds as he runs behind big number 77 for Maryville, and that is Damian Montgomery, the senior from Spring, Texas, and it'll be a first and 10 Maryville. Clock still running. 2.15 left to go. One timeout left for Methodist. Maryville up 21 to 13 in this USA South Conference game. And the rain is steady but light. Maryville going to eat up the clock. Two minutes left to go in this game. First and 10 for Maryville. Bunch going to take the ball, bounce to the outside, cuts it up to the 15, to the 10, to the 5. Touchdown, Maryville. And now we get a flags all over the place. 25-yard touchdown. Not sure what the flag will be for. One forty-one left to go. Let's see what the flag is for. Unsportsmanlike conduct is what I believe the signal was. That's the most bizarre call I've ever seen uh, called bunch for taunting uh, when all he was doing was waving to his own player. So it'll be first and goal. Well, make it first and three. So the 25-yard touchdown run by Bunch is nullified. And that is uh, for the officials who have called this game, that is kind of going to be a black mark. I hate to say that, but that was uh, ridiculous. Thomas Going to keep the ball. Trevor Thomas carries the ball. Khalil Patterson makes the tackle. Last time out for the Methodist Monarchs. And uh, Trevor Thomas coming to the sideline with the rest of the team. 21 13, Marable up over the Monarchs of. Methodists. They cannot stop the clock, the Monarchs, and Marable can probably get the ball down inside a minute if they don't get a first down. But that uh, touchdown penalty is a big call. So let's uh, wait for the game to continue. Method is getting some instruction. Obviously, we'll try to take the ball away. So Maribel has to take care of the ball. Maribel 
if you're a defensive uh, person, you're going to try to go after the ball more than the tackle. Clock will start when the snap happens. Second down in, let's call it seven. Goes to Bunch, cuts it up. He'll get the first down, spin, and gets inside the 15-yard line. Referee's no call on that. So that's a first down for Maryville. The ball, the clock should continue to run. So Maryville can run out the clock. They just need to take care of the ball here. Maryville going to be in a uh, protection formation. As you can see number one and number four bunch. Referees uh, refusing to make a call on the obvious taunting by Methodist. Thirty seconds left to go. Maryville just has to take a knee, and uh, a win will do wonders for this program. Team that was 0 and 5 starting to come together a little bit here. Each play. Everybody matures a little bit. Snap down, and that should be the ball game. Ten seconds left to go. Maribel wins today, 21-13 over Methodist. It's a USA Conference win. They go to one and two in the conference, and Maribel wins today at home, homecoming, 21-13. I'm going to take a quick break, and we'll be right back.
Welcome back, everybody. George DeBobby here at Maryville College. Homecoming, Maryville wins 21-13 over Methodist. Maryville goes to 1-5. and five. Methodist goes to 2-3. and three. Maryville in the conference now, 1-2. and two. Methodist, 1-2 and two as well. So good day for Maryville. By a quarter, Maryville was up 7-3 to three after the first quarter. Second quarter, Methodist scores 10, goes into the halftime, leading 13-7. Maryville scores 14 points, unanswered points by the Methodist Monarchs, and goes into the locker room today, 21-13, the victors. If we look at some stats, we'll get them up for you here real quick. And homecoming still going on here, of course. your score. Some team comparisons. Maribel with 19 first downs as they head off the field into the locker room to celebrate homecoming. 19 first downs to 14 for Methodist. Maribel had five passing first downs, 11 rushing first downs, three by penalty. The Monarchs had 10 passing first downs, two rushing first downs, and two by penalty. Third down official uh, efficiency, Maryville, four of seven, which was pretty good above their average. Methodist uh, held by the Maryville defense to just four of 11 on third down. Fourth down, Methodist was one of three. Maryville ran 65 plays for 200, excuse me, for 341 yards. Their average yardage per play was 5.3 yards. They had 79 yards passing. They were six of 11, four passing. Uh, excuse me, it's uh, there. It's updating. Uh, 132 yards passing, eight for 20, 6.6 yards per pass. Uh, they had one interception. They rushed for 209 yards. So Maryville uh, comes up with 341 yards total offense. The Monarchs come up with 207 yards passing and rushing. The Monarchs just six yards net rushing. So Maribel did the defense job on them. And uh, Maribel over on the hill, uh, I don't know if you can hear it, but it's over in the tailgate area you can't see. But uh, just having a good time with a win. A win will do wonders for a program that uh, is as proud as this and uh, certainly has fallen on some hard times, but certainly made the most of it today and certainly will look to – head uh, into the game next week right here against LaGrange at 1 o'clock. So that'll be another big game. Uh, Six yards net rushing uh, on 31 attempts. Pretty good. Total yards, uh, Maryville, I said, 341. Monarchs just 213. So pretty good day for the Maryville offense and defense. We get to some individual stats real quick here for you. Uh, On the Maryville side, Trevor Thomas was 3 of 11 for 71 yards. Uh, Caden Harbin, 5 of 9 for 61 yards. Bunch, the tailback for Maryville, 27 carries, 179 yards, two touchdowns. He had one call back for a uh, uh, just a bizarre call by the officials uh, on him for taunting as he was celebrating going into the end zone. So uh, kudos to Jacob Bush in the offensive line. Trevin Thrower, four rushes, 18 yards. Caden Harbin, four rushes, eight yards. And Terry Stewart, two rushes, six yards. Receiving-wise, Pierre Watkins, two for 85. Terry Stewart, three for 25. Jacob Bunch, two for 17. The fumbles, Bunch had one fumble. He lost it. Ogle had a fumble on a punt and lost it as well. on the defense, uh, Cumby with uh, five total tackles. It was Jamal Ware, number 10, with 13 total tackles. Jacory Jackson with eight total tackles. So good day for the Maryville Scots today. And uh, they win 21-13. Next week, 1 o'clock, right here at Maryville College. Maryville plays LaGrange. Maryville wins today. This is George DeBobby saying so long, everybody. Happy homecoming. Be safe.